When Darwin FPV launched the Tiny Ape, I was excited because I had previously bought the Baby Ape. I really wanted to see how they had evolved even though it was on a smaller two and a half inch platform. And more especially because Darwin FPV are taking direct aim at the Emacs Tiny Hawk Freestyle and the Gep RC Smart 25. In this video, I'm gonna share my experience with buying, unboxing, setting up and flying the Tiny Ape Freestyle because I wanna see if it not only lives up to the freestyle name, but if it's a good FPV drone for beginners and intermediate pilots. There are two versions, one with the drone on its own, the Tiny Ape for $150, and one with the Runcam Thumb, the Tiny Ape Freestyle for $210. I wanna do a separate review on the Runcam Thumb, so I went and bought the Tiny Ape Freestyle. While you can buy it from Darwin FPV's website, the official AliExpress Darwin FPV store, and there are also resellers on AliExpress to choose from. I had been having a good run with AliExpress recently, but I made the decision to buy mine from Banggood, a decision that I would come to regret. On the Banggood website, at the time I bought it, it was listed as ships within 24 hours. However, 10 days after placing my order, I received an email advising of a shipping delay where I had the option of a refund or to wait. And I had 72 hours to decide. The clock was ticking and I needed to make a decision. If I chose a refund, I would have had to then go and buy it from somewhere else. And then I may be in the same situation. But if I choose to wait, I would have the uncertainty of not knowing when it would be shipped, which could be weeks or even months. I didn't know what to do. Then the strangest thing happened. The very next day with 48 hours still on the clock, I received this email. My tiny ape had shipped. After about three weeks, I received my tiny ape freestyle. However, there are still some things that needed to be done before we could take it out to fly. As I unboxed it, I wondered where the run cam thumb was, expecting a separate box. However, it was packaged inside with the needed mounts and bolts, and there was also a battery strap, props, and spare hardware included for the Tiny Ape. When I watched some of the other reviews, I noticed a bit of jello in the run cam thumb, so I used this double-sided mounting tape that came with it, which should give it a soft mount and reduce vibrations. The mounts for the thumb are too far back on the frame and don't leave much room for the battery, so I had to relocate the XT30 battery lead to the side to fit the Beta FPV 2S 300 milliamp hour battery. Now I needed to bind the Tiny Ape to my radio. The tiny Tiny Ape uses Express LRS receiver that's built into the all-in-one flight controller. However, if you do use something else like Crossfire or FreeSky, you can add a receiver to one of the available UARTs or the SBUS pad. I was a little worried about how this process would work and if it would bind without having to update Betaflight firmware. To get the Tiny Ape bound, the first thing I had to do was go to the Express LRS website, specifically the SPI receivers page, which has a feature to translate your text binding phrase such as subscribe into a CLI command that the receiver can understand. After pasting the code into the CLI, typing save and hitting enter, the flight controller reboots and now the moment of truth. Telemetry recovered. Before we could fly, there were still a few things that I needed to do in beta flight. I went through the configuration tab and ticked and unticked my usual preferences. I set up my modes or aux channels, checked the prop direction in the motors tab, and this is where I discovered a problem. The ESC on the all-in-one comes with BlueJ firmware, which allows the flight controller to filter out the noise generated from the motors. However, this wasn't enabled and it should have been. I ticked bi-directional D-shot and set the motor poles to 12. I installed the GemFam 2512 three blade props, which are a very tight fit to the frame, and then soldered the lead for the run cam thumb to a 4.5 and ground pad on the all-in-one flight controller. After charging up my 2S 300 milliamp hour batteries, even though Darwin FPV recommend a 380 to 450 milliamp hour battery, I just couldn't see how they'd fit with the run cam thumb installed. Now I was finally ready to take it out and fly. Battery placement proved to be the trickiest because the props would strike on the cable. After some repositioning and maneuvering, I was able to get it in a way that I could fly with. Taking off my first pack, the Tiny 8 felt really good under the sticks and with the extra weight of the run cam thumb, it didn't feel underpowered. I was able to perform all of the typical beginner freestyle maneuvers I normally do and was ripping around this park. On my first pack, I had about two and a half to three minutes of spirited flying, which was really enjoyable. 
Now I wanted to push a little harder to see what the tiny ape could do. The image quality from the Runcam Nano camera was pretty decent, however the video feed seems to be the issue, even though it was set to the maximum 600 milliwatts. The antenna setup on my goggles is pretty decent with a patch and an omni, however the video feed was still terrible for this power output and I wasn't even that far away. It seems the dipole antenna really struggles because it's next to the RC antenna and the power cable. Beginners who are using box goggles without a decent antenna setup are going to have issues with the video. On my second pack, I clipped a ghost branch and ended up in what turned out to be a huge crash. The battery was hanging and the run cam thumb ejected from its holder, which is now broken. I cracked the ND filter and I've even lost the back cover for it. Coming back to the bench, I didn't bring any tools and I had to break off the rest of the mount. Now I was going to be able to see if changing the battery lead position would improve the video. Pack number three and I was putting it through its paces until I crashed again. Trying to turtle mode to be able to fly away from the crash is something that a freestyle FPV drone should be able to do with ease. However, it just rolled over and wouldn't get off the ground. Turns out in the crash, I broke the motor shaft and the bell came flying off. With the motor needing replacing, my day was done and so was the Tiny 8. While these were pretty decent crashes, beginners and intermediate pilots would probably experience something similar. I'm now going to have to replace all four motors because I don't think I'll be able to just buy one of these Darwin FPV motors and I'm also going to do the video antenna at the same time. With the new HD0 Nanolite camera and 1S Whoop VTX about to launch, if you'd like to see me convert this to HD0, drop a comment below. While the Darwin FPV Tiny Ape is a great quad, you are probably also considering the Baby Ape which is $50 cheaper. Watch this video to find out which one you should buy.